here Dr. Hagar Ritzbeck, Patriarch of the Anglo-Catholic Church. We continue our series of lectures about Christian life, Christian ministry and Christian worship. Today we want to talk about common worship. How it is to worship God together as a Christian community. If we turn to the New Testament, then we can read from the Epistle to Ephesians chapter 5. Saint Apostle Paul says that singing together and playing the musical instruments. It shows that from the early church already there were in use several instruments. And we understand this very well because uh, the early church worship was based on the temple worship, which was in Judaism very, very important. And then also Apostle Paul writes in his letter to Colossians chapter 3, and singing to the Lord from all your heart. It means that to be involved totally with this that we are doing together uh, during the worship service. The problem is that uh, after a while the singing uh, went over to so-called professionals that were around the altar during the Middle Ages, certain people who were singing. It was choir singing there. Other people were sitting in the pews and praying. And uh, this is the, one of the reasons also that the room around the altar is called choir room. And uh, although there are many pos uh, possibilities to see in this uh, uh, method of worship very positive things, we understand also why Martin Luther during the Reformation in the 16th century, as John Calvin, wanted to put the congregation to sing. And this is very typical of the Lutheran Reformation congregations that the whole congregation was singing with great joy to the Lord. And they were even not only singing in the churches, but they were even, uh, they were singing also outside the church, in the homes, uh, in the gatherings and other places. And it was uh, one of the things when several times church historians considered to be very positive change. That the whole congregation began to uh, participate in the worship service more and more. And when we are jumping now ahead, certain centuries then, during the Methodist revival in the uh, 18th century England, in John Wesley services, uh, people were singing very much. It, was, it can even be called uh, within the church as a singing revolution. And these uh, hymns were very uh, wonderful. They were theologically very uh, precise and it is even uh, told that if you want to uh, study Methodist liturgy and Methodist uh, theology you can study more it from the Methodist hymns than from anywhere else. And there are many wonderful hymns which are theologically so deep uh, for example as Charles Wesley's hymn which he wrote six hours after his conversion, how can it be? How can it be that God, immortal God, dies for me? And it was a real singing church. Then, of course, we know that in the 19th century, when we had the revivals in Estonia also, people came together to prayer houses, sometimes one hour or two hours, before the worship service and they were singing. They were opening the hymnal and were singing these songs. Of course, these songs are many, many verses. Today, we commonly use a song with three verses and um, a refrain, but then it was um, 16, 19 verses. I remember I was some years ago in England and uh, when uh, to uh, afternoon such kind of singing worship service. It was very interesting that we were singing there all these Methodist hymns with 
12, 13, 16, 19 verses and it was very very unique experience for me. And now we have reached to the point where in the 20th century uh, from 1970s on uh, rock music, pop music uh, came to the church and uh, within uh, this mm, the process uh, so-called worship part of the worship service began to be very important and it meant that there were worship leaders, a leading singer or leading singers, a band, a choir or whatsoever and uh, they were leading the singing of the whole church. Uh, congregation people were standing, raising their hands. The text was either in the sheets they had or it was projected on the screen and everybody was able to join together with singing. Unfortunately, at least from uh, some people's minds, uh, during the last um, decade, this has changed also. Because the musicians have uh, developed much more professional attitude, they have taken much more new instruments, and uh, they don't want to uh, accompany congregational singing, but they want to somehow to be like leaders of the singing. And so they have a lot of instruments, a lot of uh, music, a lot of uh, uh, other effects, uh, lights, different lights, moving lights, uh, smoke, and everything else. And then the congregation is standing. When the hymn is well known, it's no problem. Everybody sings along. But uh, such professional musicians don't like to sing the same songs. It's uh, some kind of not a special secret. And so they are uh, creating uh, new and new songs. And then it uh, looks like so that the band is singing with the lights and with the smoke, uh, interesting kitchen songs and the people are standing and raising their hands and it's very difficult for them to join in singing as they are hearing the song first time or second or third, third time. And then uh, these other elements are also somehow uh, fulfilling certain purposes. And I heard that in America there was one worship service where uh, the leader of the band told that when during the worship service the smoke machine broke down then there was no any more, any more smoke then he told that oh, I was in special in the spirit the Holy Spirit was inspiring such a way and suddenly when the smoke machine broke down all the Holy Spirit uh, atmosphere and everything disappeared simply. So we are arrived now to such kind of uh, places and understandings. And then um, when we are going back to uh, the Mass of Tridento Trento, then that was very important the part of the priest or bishop and congregation was uh, basically uh, not doing so much, so they were kneeling and praying and this uh, such kind of contemplative part of worship is also very important really and in so many other uh, places today uh, even other churches are using this uh, type of worshipping model also and uh, I don't want to say anything bad concerning this and this is another way but after the Vatican Second Council uh, usually the Roman Catholic Church is encouraging people to be more participating in the worship service. So for me personally, I think that it's better for us to, to choose the middle of the road position that our um, musicians can have very great impact and leaders of liturgy, but from the other side that the congregation and the church has also possibilities uh, different possibilities to be in such a contemplative mood, to pray in silence uh, with other people in the church, or to say together certain liturgical phrases, or to sing together. And I really think that the common worship uh, has very important aspects of the church life. As we know from the Anglican Church, 
the book of worship is even called the book of common prayer. There is uh, prayer which is together, there is worship which is together. And for this reason, not wanting to say anything negative uh, to the either side, I think that both sides can give uh, to us some encouragement how to really uh, not to lose the post-reformation values and post-reformation situations when the real congregational singing uh, was making a real great mark as in Ephesians 5 or Colossians 3 Saint Apostle Paul was saying that singing from all your heart to the Lord and uh, playing several instruments. I think that if we do this in a such kind of balance then it will be encouraging us and it will be a worship which really gives us a lot of joy and a lot of encouragement. Amen.